Now we'll take a look at two examples of dividing sign decimals. Looking at our first example, remember a fraction bar means division, so we have a positive 24.91 divided by a negative 5.3. Well, a positive divided by a negative is negative, so this quotient will be negative. Let's go ahead and make a note of that. This is going to be equal to a negative value. And now we can go ahead and divide, ignoring the signs, so we'll have 24.91 divided by 5.3. And now remember, when dividing by decimal, we want our divisor to be a whole number. So we need to move this decimal point to the right one place to here. And this is okay as long as we do the same to our dividend. So we're going to move the decimal point here as well. Now let's go ahead and rewrite this so it's a little bit neater. We're actually going to have 249.1 divided by 53 after we move the decimal point. So we'll move the decimal point up into our quotient, and now we'll divide. So the first question is, how many 53's are there in 249? Well, let's try four. Four times three would be 12, carry a one. Four times five is 20 plus one, that'd be 21. Remember, as long as this difference is less than 53, this four is correct. So we'd have a seven here and a three here, and that's zero. So 37 is less than 53, so we're good. Bring down the next digit, which is a one. And now we want to know how many 53's there are in 371. Again, that's not an easy question, but if I think of this as 50, I know 50 times seven is 350, so that's close. Let's try seven. Seven times three is 21. Now we're going to carry a two. And this looks good. Seven times five is thirty-five plus two, that's thirty-seven. And this difference is zero, so we're done. So this quotient is four point seven, but we know for the original problem, this quotient has to be negative, so it's actually negative four point seven for the original problem. Let's take a look at a second example. Notice here we have a negative divided by a negative, which is positive. So let's go ahead and make a note of that as well. It's going to be positive. Now we can ignore the signs and divide as we normally would. So we'll have 1.634 divided by 8.6. Again, we want our divisor to be a whole number, so we'll have to move the decimal point to the right once here and the same here. And again, just to make this a little bit cleaner, let's go ahead and rewrite this we'll have 16.34 divided by, this would be 86 after moving the decimal. So now we need to move the decimal point up into our quotient, and now we'll divide as we normally do. So the first question is, how many 86's are there in 163? Well, two is going to be too large, so I'll have to try one. One times 86 is 86. To borrow from the six, this will be 13 minus six, that's seven. And then we have 15 minus eight, that's seven as well. And 77 is less than 86, so that's good. Bring down the next digit, which is four. Now we want to know how many 86's there are in 774. Again, that's not an easy question. I know we can't use 10, but I know 10 times 86 would be 860. So let's try nine. Nine times six is fifty-four, we carry a five. Nine times eight is seventy-two plus five, that's seventy-seven, so we got lucky. This difference is zero, so this decimal terminates, and this is our quotient, but normally we'll put a zero in the ones place value when a decimal is less than one. And again, we already made a note that this quotient is positive, so the original quotient is positive zero point one nine. I hope you found these examples helpful.